there. Doing a video today. NATO Multimat 35S. Or just the Multimat 35S. Stuff in Phoenix Keeping that. Comes in a stuff bag. The outside of the stuff sack is ripped up nylon. The inside is soft fleece, which is usable as a pillow. I'll show you in a second. But for package, packaging or size reference, there's a liter bottle, bottle of milk. That big, that big, and uh, that big. So about three, three uh, liters of space. So, get it inflating, take off the elasticated bands, open the valve, put it down on a ground sheet or on, on a sharp glass if you're stupid, and uh, yeah, let it, let it inflate itself. This is a pillow, you just stuff it full of whatever you have extra, right. Dimensions of the mat. Length is 122 centimeter and width is 51 centimeter. And uh, height is fully inflated, about three and a half centimeter or four, maybe five actually. I think it's about five. The, uh, maybe three, I don't know. It's good enough. The top material is a very strong ripstop nylon and the bottom material is a bit of a rubberized kind of anti-slip nylon, which I assume is also ripstop underneath. I, I think it's probably a ripstop nylon with a rubberized uh, coating sprayed onto it. The valve is very good, nice and big. Uh, also replaceable and no manufacturing defects that I've seen. Because some of the cheaper mats, the plastic inset that houses the valve is uh, made so badly that it has jagged edges which destroy the mat. Anyway, close the valve. There you have it. Why does it not matter that it's only 120 centimeters long when the average guy is 180 centimeters? Because your head's going to be on the pillow anyway. We're talking about a compromise between comfort and packability. Having an extra 60 centimeters of mat, 30 centimeters for the feet, 30 centimeters for the head. Head doesn't need it. It's on a pillow anyway, or on a backpack. Or in this case, a duffel bag. The feet, if the feet need to be off the ground, it means that it's cold enough that you're gonna be doing <laughs> follow. It's a cheap sleeping bag. Okay. So it's cold enough that your feet have to be off the ground. What does that mean? That means that it's cold enough that you're going to have to keep extra clothing in your sleeping bag so that it doesn't freeze or get cold or whatever your, whatever your choice of logical reasoning is. So you've got to keep this extra clothing in the sleeping bag anyway. Let's kick it down to the feet section. There your feet are off the ground. Done. End of story. So. There's no problem with the 122 centimeter sleeping mat unless you're more than three meters long. Caution. Don't blow air into this mat or any sleeping mat. You introduce moisture from your lungs into the mat. In warm temperatures, the moisture will allow bacteria to breed inside the mat, even though there is an antibacterial coating somewhere involved with this whole thing. Why do you need it? Don't be stupid. In cold temperatures, blowing air into a sleeping mat can kill you. Why? Because the moisture that is introduced from the air from your lungs will freeze inside the mat, become sharp icicles and puncture the mat, and you will die or get sick. So don't blow air into a sleeping mat. You wanna see what it looks like? Bring it. Fat guy lies on it. This is what it looks like. Very, very comfortable. But more importantly, the build quality is extremely high. I bought this from Surplus and Outdoors, but uh, Con, the UK uh, 
but I'm gonna do a surplus, guys. They're pretty good. I like this stuff, especially if you're in the UK. Surplus and outdoor.com. Pack procedure. I'm gonna time it just for fun. Open the valve, flip the mat over, fold it in two, and roll it up. Make sure the valve is completely open. So you can do it fast. Close the valve. Open the mat again. Roll it up tightly. Apply more pressure. Around 20 kilograms or 30 kilograms is enough. You don't want to kill it, but you do want to get the air out of it. You'll find that you have this little bit of air. Open the valve. Apply more pressure. Squeeze it out, hold it, close the valve. I don't know, hold it somehow. I like to put it in the on. Get the stuff back. Get the bands. Get the bands on the mat. Double check the valve. Don't don't crank down with it, it's just plastic, but just finger tight, it's enough. I like to keep the valve up so that I know which side I need to be a bit more gentle with when I'm packing. One minute, 42 seconds. Pretty fucking quick for a minus 20 degree sleeping system. I think that this will be comfortable for me at minus 10 Celsius. With the mat, the German army sleeping mat underneath, which I normally use, uh, minus 15, minus 20. I really trust this thing so far. I've used it for about, I don't know, a significant amount of time, insignificantly, in relevant temperatures. What does it say on the on the original product. On the bag it says mat comma sleeping comma thermal comma self-inflating with stuff sack. Then it presents the NATO serial number which is 8465-99-310-9203. So what it says on the bag. It says something similar on the mat. Buy it from Multimat. Multimat 35S. What else? So here, here's a liter of milk. It's pretty small. All right. Don't blow air into a self-inflating mat ever. If you have to, increase the air. Take a take a bottle like this. Put a rubber tube on it. That's that uh, you can attach to the valve of the mat. <sighs> And then uh, squeeze the air out of the bottle into the mat, hold the bottle compressed so the air stays in the mat, and close the valve. You won't need more than half a liter of air in either direction, but never blow air into a self-inflating mat. Also, these mats should keep your body off the ground anyway. If they don't, just, you know, send it back.